so let's discuss the concept of critical angle and total internal reflection a very very simple concept so remember this phenomena this total internal reflection is a phenomena it happens only when a ray travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium remember it happens only when a ray travels from a denser to rarer medium if your ray is traveling from rarer to denser medium don't ever expect that total internal reflection will happen let's actually try to understand what this is first of all after that you don't you won't have to remember this you can actually understand it for example uh, let this be a normal to the surface all right so you incident a ray uh, let let a ray travel from denser to rarer medium so let first incident it along the normal if you incident a ray along the normal angle of incidence is zero or because it makes no angle with the with the normal so i will say that mu denser let 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 it be let it have a refractive index mu d and let this have mu r right so in that case i will say ultimately uh, in fact let me let me just draw a general case here and then explain you uh, at this juncture so let i be the angle of incidence and then because it's traveling from denser to rarer medium it is slightly bent away from the normal according to snell's law i will say that mu d sin i is equals to mu r sin r right this is the refractive index of a denser medium this is the refractive index of a rarer medium this will be greater than this obviously also actually while discussing uh, refractive index i didn't tell you but it doesn't matter like uh, a medium need, need not be what do you say geometrically or volumetrically dense for 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 uh, for it to be a denser medium right so i'm talking about optical density here so uh, let me just give you this example something like turpentine and water turpentine oil and water so water has a higher density than turpentine oil water has a higher density than turpentine oil but turpentine oil is a denser medium than water optically denser medium than water it has a greater refractive index than water but actually uh, sorry not actually but but uh, uh, what do you say volumetrically water is more dense so sometimes it happens that some medium which is volumetrically more dense might actually be optically less dense so uh, this is i'm talking about optical density here so optically denser medium where velocity of light slows down and rarer medium velocity of light is faster compared to denser medium right so this is how it is uh, this is your snell's law so for example if you incident at i equal to 0 like along the normal sin r will be zero right it will just go pass it will pass through undeflected if you start increasing your i if you start increasing your i your r will also start increasing right so it it will start it will keep bending it will keep it, it will start from here and it will keep bending what happens is there is a special angle it's called critical angle so when you incident your ray at critical angle this ray bends so much that it grazes the surface that means what do you mean by grazing r is equal to 90 such angle is called critical angle and if i apply snell's law i'll get mu denser sin ic is equals to mu rarer sin 90 which is 1 so sin ic is equals to mu rarer by mu denser and ic is nothing but sin inverse mu rarer by mu denser so for example if your if your ray was traveling from rarer to denser medium if you keep changing the angle it will keep turning towards the normal will it bend away from the normal to 90 like this no right that's why this phenomena that you see in fact later we will we'll just move on to total internal reflection now uh, 
this phenomena that you see it is valid only from only when your ray travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium right. So, this is your denser medium this is your rarer medium. What happens is if you slightly increase your angle more than the critical angle. So, even if it is a 0 0.000001 degree of increase alright just a hypothetical number that I am taking even if it slightly increases a little you know what will happen. So, now what happened was gradually if you increase from 0 to critical angle gradually your r increased from 0 to 90 at critical angle it became 90. When you slightly increase from critical angle it is not that it will gradually come below what will happen is it will get reflected. It will obey laws of reflection that we already know. So, if you incident at i it will get reflected by i if your i is greater than ic this is what will happen. No matter if even if it is a 0 0.001 degree increase it is not that it will bend down by 0 0.001 degree it will get reflected completely and then it will obey laws of reflection. So, this phenomena is called total internal reflection. Now, imagine is it possible when when your ray travels from a rarer to denser medium no right because it will always keep bending towards the normal it will not bend away from the normal and then get reflected in the same medium in this manner. This will happen only when your light is traveling from denser to rarer medium. So, this is the formula for total internal reflection uh, it happens when your i is greater than ic maybe it can be much greater or, or even if it is slightly greater it will happen and ic is the critical angle which where your at that angle your ray grazes the surface this is called grazing the surface it is grazing the surface it is having a refractive ang uh, uh, angle of refraction as 90. So, this is the phenomena of total internal reflection critical angle. Uh, in fact, uh, this concept is widely used in a lot of places like like transmission of signal in an optical fiber. So, if you have an optical fiber like this if I incident a signal right a signal. Uh, so, your optical fiber inside is usually more dense this is more dense this is more rare like the medium outside is more rare. So, what happens is when your light travels from denser to rarer medium uh, this phenomenon of total internal reflection is possible. So, if I incident at critical angle or slightly greater than critical angle my ray will get reflected back. So, if you incident at critical angle it will graze the surface, but what I usually do is I, in, I incidented at approximately critical angle, but slightly greater in that case it will get reflected and once it gets reflected this is the normal to the surface and then these two normals are parallel if this is IC uh, or, or something slightly greater than IC this will be the same angle and this will be the same angle. So, that means here also if you if you incident at if you incidented at I greater than IC if you incident it at i greater than ic but approximately equal to ic it will get reflected with i and then it will get incident on this surface with i once again it's what do you say it will get totally uh, uh, internally reflected why because your i is again greater than ic at this interface so without your signal will not go out there will be no loss of signal it will keep on traveling inside right so this phenomenon of total internal reflection is used uh, in transmission of signals in optical fiber and a lot of other places as well so uh, I guess you have understood this. We will now move on to refraction through a prism, uh, slightly important from the exam point of view because a lot of times a lot of questions come from this topic. So, we will discuss everything in detail properly. So, uh, this is what a prism is, alright. This is your ray, your incident ray, incident ray. So, this green line is how the ray is traveling it will bend towards the normal it will go like this and then it uh, at this interface it will bend away from the normal because outside is air and let this have a refractive index mu uh, let the prism have a refractive index mu and outside let it be air. This A which is the apex angle is called the angle of the prism alright. I 1 is the angle of incidence at this surface I 2 is the angle of emergence from this surface like when the ray emerges after refraction. I 2 is the angle of emergence, I 2 is the angle that this ray makes with the normal it is called angle of emergence and uh, this is the first refractive angle uh, sorry uh, refraction angle. So, it gets refracted the ref angle of refraction is this and then when, when it gets incident this angle this angle of incident inside is called R 2 like it is denoted by R 2 and this is I 2. This delta look at this delta what is this delta here if your ray went undeflected it would have gone like this. 
but finally your ray is going like this so if i join these initial and final position i get what is known as angle of deviation so this delta is called angle of deviation so how much did your by what angle did your ray deviate that's what that's what it is so understand these terminologies properly and then we have a couple of formulae to remember here right in fact these two will take care of almost every other formula if you just remember these two uh, it's it just comes from geometry remember so uh, what you do is you join these two normals join this uh, what do you say this normal let's let's derive these two actually uh, you can join them here and it's like a parallelogram now all right so in a parallelogram this for example first of all this angle is 90 because this orange is the normal to the pink one this angle i'm talking about this pink and this orange like these two oranges and these two pinks this, that is my parallelogram uh, that is my quadrilateral sorry that's my quadrilateral that i'm talking about so uh, this is 90 because orange is the normal to pink this is 90 right this is a and let this angle be some phi doesn't matter so i can say a plus 5 plus 90 plus 90 should be 360 because in a quadrilateral the sum of angles should be 360 so a plus 5 should be 180 right now look at this triangle this one this green one these two oranges all right r1 plus r2 plus 5 sum of angles in a triangle has to be 180 so these these sum up to 180 these sum up to 180 i can equate these two a plus phi is equal to r1 plus r2 plus phi phi gets cancelled and you get a is equal to r1 plus r2 this is your first formula now remember uh, i'll tell you actually in je advanced 2016 uh, there was a question on basically refraction of this prism where this r1 plus r2 equal to a was not being obeyed remember this is not a universal law or something it's coming from geometry if the geometry is, is of the prism is such that this cannot happen then it will not happen because here the geometry looks like this so there uh, i think it was like this the prism was like this and then uh, the ray was incident at some angle notice there that they didn't obey this law it didn't obey this law so like iit usually you get such questions where they are not directly formula based all right so they they require understanding so try to understand this is not a universal law or something it's come from geometry because the geometry of this prism is allowing this to happen it's happening in that question it was not allowing that to happen so so uh, in that question this this law was not being obeyed but nevertheless for such prisms and for such incidence angles we can we can we can take this for granted that okay it will be like this but if you get a complicated case or, or or else if you get a slightly different case like this this prism doesn't look like this right so it, it's it's a new kind of a prism so there you have to solve it using geometry and find out what this relation is so here we have solved it using geometry and then most likely in mains you'll get only this so remember this r1 plus r2 equal to a delta is equal to i1 plus i2 minus a let's derive the second formula so here look at this triangle now this green dotted one this green dotted one and the green and the green solid one i'm talking about this triangle so uh, let this angle be some a all right let this angle be b this angle and this angle now this delta is the exterior angle to this triangle right and we already know exterior angle is the sum of opposite interior angles so i can say in a triangle this a plus b is equal to delta all right let's see what a plus b is look at this dotted line it it it, it is actually a part of this arrow so this is like a straight line and this is like a straight line this orange one so this i1 and this a plus r1 are same right because vertically opposite angles so i can say i1 is equal to a plus r1 so i can say a is equals to i1 minus r1 similarly here i can say i2 this green one and, the, and this green dotted one and this green solid one are one line because that's how i joined them by i wanted to find out delta so i joined them back so this is the straight line this green one is a straight line so this angle and this angle are equal vertically opposite angles this angle is r2 plus b and it's i2 so they are equal r2 plus b equal to i2 so i2 is equal to b plus r2 so i can say b is nothing but i2 minus r2 so put a and b here you'll get i1 minus r1 plus i2 minus r2 is equal to delta 
you will get I1 plus I2 minus R1 plus R2 in bracket which is A, this is equal to delta. So this is, this is the relation. So uh, with these two relations, we can proceed with most of the things actually. For example, if your angle of incidence is very, very small, right? Uh, and then let this be your air, let this be, uh, it will have a refractive index 1 outside air and this will have a refractive index 2. So let's apply Snell's law at this, junk, uh, at this what do you say, surface. So I will, what I will get is mu1 sin i1 is equal to, uh, sorry, uh, not mu1 sin i1, sin i1 because it is 1, uh, mu1 is nothing but 1, sin i1 is equal to mu which is of the, what do you say, prism. So I am applying the Snell's law here for this particular refraction, I1, R1 uh, refraction. Uh, it is mu sin R1. All right. So remember, if I1 is very small, R1 will also be very small. And uh, we already know uh, that sin theta is approximately equal to theta if theta is very, very small. So if I1 is very, very small, R1 will be very, very small and then I will get this relation. Like uh, I can approximately say. I1 is equal to mu R1 instead of sin I1 is equal to mu sin R1. R1 is equal to mu R1 because I1 and R1 are both small and then when any angle is small, sin of that angle is that angle itself. So R1, I1 is equal to mu. So this formula I can also modify something like uh, mu times R1. Similarly, uh, if R1 is small, uh, if this, what do you say, I2 and R2 are also very, very small. So then I2 also, you can apply Snell's law here and then you will get I2 is equal to mu R2. Like just the way I got I1 is equal to mu R1, same thing. So I can replace I2 with mu R2 minus A. Then take mu common, R1 plus R2, which is A again, minus A. So delta is equals to mu minus 1 into A. This formula you get. When your I1, I2, R1, R2 are very small, only then this formula is valid, otherwise you will have to use this, right. So this has come from, uh, otherwise you will have to use Snell's law. You cannot do this approximation if I1, R1, R2, I1, R1, R2 and I2 are very, very small. Only then you can do this approximation, otherwise you cannot. If you cannot do the approximation, you won't get this formula. So uh, remember these and uh, let's look at a few more formulas. Let me create some space here and we will understand how things go in a prism.